what I haven't talked about lately? COVID-19. I'm not even really joking. I've talked about a lot of the conspiracy theories and stuff surrounding it, but I haven't really talked about SARS-CoV-2 itself. To be fair, the basic facts remain the same now as they did two years ago. The best way that we can stop this pandemic is what we've known for quite a while now. Get vaccinated, get your booster, wear your mask when you're inside around strangers, try not to be inside around strangers, keep your distance from others. But there is this new variant, uh, good old Omicron. And with that comes new questions and concerns. The biggest fear for most people who have been doing everything right throughout this pandemic is the idea that SARS-CoV-2 could mutate in a way that lets it completely evade our vaccines. So good news first, that hasn't happened with Omicron, apparently. In a study done in South Africa, the Johnson & Johnson single-dose vaccine drastically reduced hospitalizations for people with the Omicron variant, and no one in that study died. There will continue to be breakthrough infections, of course, because vaccines simply aren't magical spells that protect you from viruses. But it looks like our current vaccines are good. Another new report this month finds that a third shot of the mRNA vaccine increases protection against Omicron by 100-fold. Another new report suggests that two doses uh, of the mRNA um, or Johnson Johnson plus mRNA might not be great, but that third shot is essential. So as a person who got Johnson & Johnson as my first shot and then the mRNA second shot, I'm going to be getting one more mRNA shot as soon as I'm eligible. So it seems like a consensus is building that a third dose is critical for everyone to fight Omicron. The other question a lot of people seem to have is whether or not Omicron is less severe and less deadly than previous variants. It seems like the jury is still out on that. You know, it has definitely killed people, but there's compelling evidence that it may be gentler than Delta, even though it seems to be transmitting more easily. So that's good, right? Like we want something that that transmits a lot and is less severe, so it displaces all of those other nastier variants. Well, no, not really. Um, you may think that the end game for COVID-19 is when it mutates to something like the common cold. You know, everyone gets it eventually, but it's just not a big deal for the majority of us. It's possible that that could happen. After all, the virus doesn't want to kill you because then it can't be transmitted to a new host. So the most successful viruses don't cause their hosts much fuss, and instead they just jump from person to person, often invisibly. Like herpes, for instance. You know, most of the people who have herpes never even know they have it, so they don't take any precautions against it, which allows herpes to more easily jump to new hosts. It's a sneaky, successful little jerk. So is that what has finally happened with COVID-19 and with Omicron? Well, probably not, since it seems that people are still dying from it. But is it a step in the right direction? Uh, recall that while it may be less deadly, it appears to be much, much more contagious. Data suggests that the number of people infected with Omicron is doubling about every three days in South Africa, where it was initially reported, but it's doubling every 1.6 days in Denmark and every 1.7 days in the UK, uh, two places where there's much more sequencing being done, and thus the numbers are probably more accurate. If you're wondering whether or not 1.6 or 1.7 day double, doubling is bad, uh, consider that back in June of this year, Anthony Fauci pointed out that Delta cases were doubling in the U.S. every two weeks, which was very upsetting at the time. So if we just go by those numbers, Omicron is more than eight times more contagious than Delta, which is bad. Um, but if it's less deadly, that all evens out, right? Well, no. Unfortunately, that's not how numbers work. Um, consider this chart from Gozia Gasparovitz at the University of Calgary. The gray line at the bottom is the baseline variant, let's say Delta. The blue line is what we'd expect to see if the virus becomes twice as lethal. The red line is what happens if it stays just as lethal, but becomes twice as transmissible. Worse. 
Uh, and the green line is if it becomes twice as transmissible, but 10 times less lethal, 10 times. If we give that faster but milder variant enough time, it will absolutely wreck us. In order to get to that, it's just a common cold stage, the virus would have to get substantially less lethal, especially if it's spreading as quickly as Omicron appears to be spreading. And by the way, that's just about lethality. Um, it doesn't factor in what happens um, like what we saw in country after country throughout the past two years, where even if people aren't dying, they're filling up the hospitals and they're pushing out other people who desperately need care. They're overwhelming the system and causing more non-COVID death and injury than we would otherwise see if we weren't in a pandemic. And that's exactly what looks to be happening in the places where Omicron is currently surging. Uh, hospitals are filling up and healthcare workers are struggling to keep up. I talk about all this not to freak you out, but just because this is a complicated issue that I was interested in knowing more about, and I figured it would be helpful for other people to have this information in one spot. Because I, I do see a lot of people saying like, oh, this is good that this variant is less lethal. And it's like, yes, but. The basic message remains the same though. Like I said at the top of this video, get vaccinated, get your booster shot if you're eligible. Try not to be inside with strangers, but if you are, wear a mask and keep your distance. I know you're tired, so am I. But frankly, I'd rather be tired than be the cause of my own or someone else's otherwise easily preventable death.